Israel and Hamas has spilled over to the 20th day today. Now, the debt toll in Gaza has reached 6,500, taking the overall debt tally close to 8,000. The humanitarian crisis has gone from bad to worse in Gaza, with the UN claiming that it will be forced to halt its operations in Gaza due to lack of fuel. Meanwhile, Israel has only lamped, ramped up its airstrikes across the strip, reducing residential buildings to rubble, thereby crushing civilians. And in a never-seen-before footage, the ID of soldiers are seen firing at a Hamas vehicle, killing the driver, who then lost control of the vehicle. The ID of soldiers and then seen running towards the halted car to eliminate the other terrorists who were trying to escape. Israeli PM Benjamin Netanyahu in an address reiterated that all Hamas members will be eliminated. And he's also accepted that October 7th onslaught by Hamas was a failure on Israel's part and it will be thoroughly probed once the war against Hamas is over. <laughs> מתחת לאדמה, בתוך עזה, מחוץ לעזה, אזרחי ישראל. השבעה באוקטובר היה יום שחור בתולדותינו. נברר עד תום מה קרה בגבול הדרום ובעוטף עזה. המחדל הזה ייבדק עד תום. כולם יצטרכו לתת תשובות, גם אני. My colleague uh, Pradeep Datta joins us live from Tel Aviv in Israel uh, while the war rages on. Uh, Pradeep, uh, a lot is being said about humanitarian grounds and how people in Gaza are suffering. But Israel, on the other hand, looks in no mood to stop at this point in time. Well, of course, we'll try to connect with uh, my colleague Pradeep there, who's in Tel Aviv. But of course, these are the visuals that we are seeing of the war that is raging on between Israel and Hamas. Israel in no mood to stop, continuing its airstrikes, killing a lot of Hamas commanders who, in fact, had planned the October 7 onslaught, which killed several civilians in kibbutz. And uh, this is the response from Israel. And Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has also continued to say that they will not stop until Hamas is eliminated and all its members are killed. This is the pledge that has been taken by Israeli PM Benjamin Netanyahu and it looks like Israel is on the way to doing that. There have also been a lot of uh, concerns about humanitarian laws being violated, but Israel has brushed off all such claims. In fact, my colleague Pradeep continues to stay on with us. Pradeep, you're on ground there in Tel Aviv, in Israel. A lot is being said on international forums about humanitarian laws being violated by Israel. But Israel, on the other hand, seems like it's in no mood to stop at any point in time before it kills every single member of the Hamas. Well, we are, of course, trying to connect with my colleague Pradeep, who is in Tel Aviv, reporting from on ground. We've seen his reports as well, talking about the crisis on ground, how people have been affected, while a lot of focus is on the politics that's playing out around the conflict. Not much has been focused on the impact on the human lives on both sides of the borders. And these are the kind of reports that we've been bringing. This is the latest video from the IDF that you're seeing on your screens there of IDF forces, in fact, targeting Hamas terrorists who are trying to flee. They shot at a Hamas terrorist who was riding the, driving the car, in fact, and then chased the other terrorists. These are the civilians also being evacuated by IDF from places that are under siege. These are the visuals that you're seeing there on the screens right now. The latest visuals that have been released by the IDF, that is the Hamas terrorist who's trying to flee after the driver of the car was shot and he crashed the vehicle into a gate. And now you also see IDF... For Soldiers who are coming in, ensuring that every single Hamas terrorist who was in the car was shot down and killed and gunned down. This is the sort of action that is being taken by the IDF that has continued its airstrikes and also the ground offensive against Hamas terrorists who are still hiding in several places after crossing the border. They're also trying to ensure that the civilians who are still struck in war torn regions are also evacuated. Now, those exactly are the visuals that you're seeing on your screens. My colleague, uh, Pradeep also continues to stay on with us. Uh, Pradeep, I hope you can hear me right now. 
You're in Israel, in Tel Aviv, where all the action is now being seen. A lot is being said on international forums about Israel violating humanitarian laws, not uh, regarding human lives and all that. But Israel, on the other hand, has pledged that they will not stop until every single Hamas terrorist is eliminated. See, uh, we saw that there was a first interest after the uh, break of war, outbreak of war between Hamas and Israel. Uh, the first time the Benjamin Netanyahu was, he was addressing the nation. And that in, that nation, uh, in that address, he made it clear that this was a war for existence. This was not a war for justice or this was not a war for anything else. He was talking about this was a war for existence. And uh, the two things they are going to do. One, they are going to wipe out Hamas. They're trying to ensure that their military capability and the capability to govern is completely wiped out. And the second, what they're going to do, they're going to release all those hostages who have been in the captivity of the Hamas for the last several days. This is what he mentioned about. And so far as Israel is concerned, they are making it clear from day one, because this is not a war against Palestinians. That is one of the reasons that they had been giving people ultimatum, asking them to move from that place to safer areas. It's a war against Hamas terror organization that was responsible for brutality, barbarism and butchery. When on October 7th, they came out to this place, we saw that how they uh, resorted to savagery. They did not spare women, children, even the toddlers were not spared. And not only that, they did not only spray bullets, but they even decapitated their head, they abused bodies, they dismembered them, and uh, uh, many of them were even uh, uh, burnt alive. So uh, so that's one of the reasons that even after so many days uh, that the bodies are yet to be identified. I've been interacting with the doctors at the forensic department. They are saying that every time they're opening the body back, they're finding the charred bodies. So it's getting very difficult for them to uh, identify those bodies. So they're trying their level best. The family members are waiting for a kind of a closure. But on the other hand, we have seen uh, that uh, some people are walking over time to project Israel as an oppressor because they're saying that they are targeting civilian areas in Gaza, many people have lost their lives, 6,000 people have lost their lives. Yeah, so they, but Israel's argument is that the, uh, Hamas is using civilians as human shield. They're operating from mosques, they're operating from school buildings, they're operating from civilian areas. So the chances of civilian casualty will always be more because they are using them as human shield. They don't allow the people to move from that place uh, to safer areas. So Hamas is no least concerned about people of Palestine. They only want their blood to be spilled so that the same can be uh, used uh, for their vested interest so that the vicious cycle of violence uh, continues to vitiate atmosphere and also to portray and project uh, Israel in bad light. So they are trying to do so. So that's what exactly the blame game right now is continuing as rightly said, because uh, the truth is always the first casualty in war. That is exactly happening. The same thing here that everybody east side is trying to Pradeep, blame. you've been on ground. A lot of uh, things are being said of about uh, Israel. A lot of things are, about, are being said about the politics that's playing out and also a lot is being said about about what's happening around the world. But if you can give us a sense of what exactly the feelings of common Israelis are, because you've been interacting with a lot of people, getting us a lot of reports about what people are feeling, how people are coping up with it. What are the feelings of common Israelis on ground, even as all of this unfolds? See, what one feels like saluting, because what uh, is the people of Israel had gone through on October 7th, I think after that, what uh, one has seen, that Israeli spirit, even the bombs, bullets, rockets, nothing has failed uh, to shatter that Israeli spirit. It felt it has only strengthened their resolve to stand uh, as one nation against uh, the enemy Hamas. Uh, they are trying to help out each other because some people already we have seen that they have moved toward the frontier. They're along with the army so that they can uh, safeguard their motherland. And so there are more people who are working as volunteers trying to help army personnel, also trying to help those traumatized souls and uh, trying to help each other out. So that's really very important as a nation. Right now, nobody's talking about the politics here, though they had so many uh, grudges against the present system and the uh, present governance also. But uh, right now, nobody's talking about the failure. Right now, nobody is talking about anything else. They are saying that we are in war and we have to win this war. That's actually the people here are talking about. They say right. neither we are going to forgive them nor we are going to forget what really happened. That's one of the reasons the government also made it clear that we are going to hit hard Hamas, where it is going to hurt them most, and that is how we are going to slaughter them. And we have already seen the statement coming from Joe Biden also, because he has passed a resolution in the United Nations Security Council where he said that, yes, Israelis yes. have every right to defend themselves, and we are going to support them in this regard. Though that resolution was uh, blocked by the China as well as uh, the Russia, because they never ever wanted to uh, support uh, any initiative that is being taken by the United States of America, ever since there had been war, right, because Pradeep. each each nation has got the vested interest. But there are certain developments that have taken place in recent uh, uh, hours is that one, 
uh, that any time there can be ground assault. Already the preparations are ma being made for that. Mobilization of troops are there. Tanks are there on the border. They are trying to look for that incursion corridor so that they can penetrate inside the territory. On the other hand, we have seen that there was a secret meeting that was held in Lebanon where the legions from the Hezbollah, the legions from Hamas, and also the Palestinian uh, jihadi group, they were together. Uh, that means they are also planning something so that in case there is a ground incursion, there is a ground assault, so that they can also uh, retaliate because we have seen that there are several times they have tried to fire rockets in that region. The place where I am standing, just uh, just a kilometers away from this region, uh, yesterday Absolutely. there was a rocket attack because of which uh, four people were critically injured. So they are trying their level best to penetrate the sky and also penetrate the Iron Dome to target many of the civilian areas. The situation on ground continues to remain tense. There are no signs of de-escalation at this stage. Absolutely, Pradeep, like you rightly mentioned, no signs of de-escalation there, but uh, still at the end of the day, Israel is speaking in one voice, like you said, and of course, we've, see, we've been seeing your ground reports that are coming in, heart-wrenching scenes and a lot of stories that need to be told besides the politics that is being reported across the planet. Thanks a lot for joining us. Do take care of yourself. And uh, this is, of course, what's happening in Israel and Hamas and Times Network is continuously bringing you all the reports from on ground. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of The Bulletin. For more news and updates, stay tuned to Mirana.